Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel. 34 times the Booster Club has been called upon and 34 times they've answered. Join the team today and help send the prophets around the world. 12 tribes worldwide. Shalom. I can't get enough for this word. Call me library. All you do is talk. I tell them read. I'll be your ball bearer. As long as my hands clean, I'm going to teach. I let the laws tear. You rebuff your doctrine. Can't believe I even fell for it. No top models, no need for worries, cause God got us. See, masculinity need to be shown to for real. And all of you that's cross-dressing would be dressed to be killed. Apollo Creed, but I'm hitting like I'm holy field. You counting sheep, but you the high lean, the type to flee. This for the meat, when the battle won't, they gnash their teeth. I can't believe I even fell for their hypocrisy. Like it or not, it's Kwam Yasharala. Laws attached to the brain, a dubla obligata. We are not the same over here, we walk with giants. Yeah, Ten toes, toes down, down with the clay is mixed with iron. I can't get enough for this word, call me library. All you do is talk, I tell them read, I be your ball bearer. As long as my hands clean, I'm a teach, I let the laws tear. You rebuff your doctrine, can't believe I even fell for it. What the sister said is she goes to church, but the problem is our people don't go to church for the right reasons, and y'all don't go on the right day according to the Bible. Right. Because the Bible said the seventh day is the day you're supposed to go to church. Right. Now everybody has a phone. If you look at the calendar on your phone, the first day is Sunday. Right. The seventh day is Saturday. Right. right. So we have to do what God says. Not what man says. Read the scriptures. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So the Bible said, remember the Sabbath day. That's a commandment. Not a suggestion. You, don't, you can't change the day from the seventh day to the first day. Read it again. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Read. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. You're supposed to keep this day separate from all other days. Read. Six days shalt thou labor. So for six days, you're supposed to do your work. You're supposed to take care of your household. You're supposed to pay bills. You're supposed to work for food. For six days, read. And do all thy work. And do all your work. Read. But the seventh day. But the seventh day, the holy day, the separate day, read. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That's the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. Right. Not what your oppressors say. Not Sunday. The Bible says Saturday. Real. But what happened? Our people forgot the laws of God. Our people forgot that this is the Sabbath day of God. Right. Saturday, not Sunday. So the Bible has commandments. We're supposed to follow them according to the scriptures. Right. Read that. Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. Real. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation. So, we're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath day. Right. That's part of you keeping it holy. Right. That's a commandment according to the Bible. Real. Right. But our people hate these commandments. Right. Our people don't want to follow commandments. Right. But guess what? The prophets got to teach you the truth according That's to right. the scriptures. Read right. it right. again. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation. So, you're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath day. Right. right. Read. Upon the Sabbath day. Right. Give me a uh, num uh, Nehemiah. So, you're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath day. This is supposed to be a separate day. Right. You're supposed to join together with your people. Right. Yeah. God said the seventh day. Right. Sunday is not the seventh day. That's right. right. Let's get another commandment. Read. Number, excuse me, Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. Real. And if the people of the land bring wire or any victuals on the seventh day to sell. So, the Bible says, if you have people that come to you and want to sell you something on a Sabbath day, you're supposed to do something. Let's see if it's supposed to be buying or selling. Read. That we would not buy it of them on the 
seventh day. Right. So, if somebody is selling something to you on the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to buy it. Right. You are breaking God's commandments by doing that. Right. Right. And that's the problem with our people. Give me Hosea 4 and 6. Amen. That's the problem with our people. We don't listen to God. Right. We want to listen to the white man. Right. We want to listen to the Chinese man. Right. We want to listen to the Arabs right. who had us in slavery. Right. We're supposed to be listening to the God of this Bible. That's the right. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has his laws written here right. in the scriptures. Right. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Right. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God said my people, my people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read. Right. Right. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Because you rejected the Bible, you rejected the knowledge. Now you know you're not supposed to buy today on the Sabbath day, but you reject it. Read. I will also reject thee. Guess what? God is going to reject you right. because you reject his law. To think that our people are free. To think that no, there's no problem in society. Brother, let me ask you, what's wrong with our people? What's the problem? Confused? Give me verse 1. We're going to see. Hosea 4 and verse 1. What's wrong with our people today? Read. Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Real. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Guess what? Is it hard for you to stand right there and hear the word of God? Is that difficult? Is it hurting you? That's simple. Just hear the word of God. Humble yourself down and listen. Right. All praises that you're standing right there with a fly in your hand. Be reading. For the Lord has made controversy with the inhabitants of the land. What's a controversy? Controversy. Right. A problem. God has a problem with the inhabitants of this land. Right. Because there is no truth, no mercy. Because the land has no truth. The land will tell you that a man with man is okay. The land will tell you that a woman with woman is okay. The land will tell you that you're not a whole man. You're three-fifths of a man. That's what the land tells you. That's not true. God said you are God on the face of this earth. But we die like princes because we don't follow this Bible. Read. No knowledge of God. There's the no knowledge of God in this land. Right. This land does is not a Bible-based land. Right. America is not a Bible-based land. Right. Because right. the Bible speaks against their laws. Right. It speaks against their sins. Right. So God has a problem with that. Read. Verse yeah. 2. By swearing and lying. By swearing and by lying. Because our people say they love God. Right. And they lie. By doing sin. Right. They lie by going to church on Sunday. Right. They lie by uh, worshiping their oppressors. Right. By marrying the other nations. Right. They are swearing and lying to God. Read. Right. And killing and stealing. And killing and stealing. Listen here. Our people have a problem with cops that kill our people. Right. There's more black on black crime in Chicago alone right. than all America. Right. Of our own people killing each other. Right. Why nobody don't march about that? Right. Why we don't march against black on black crime? Right. Why are we worried about the other nations killing us? That's what they're supposed to do. Right. Because they know who you are. Right. They know you're supposed to be a king. They know you look like Christ. Right. They know you're the greatest thing walking the earth. Right. So they don't tell you to protest about black on black crime. Right. They tell you to protest about the people you look up to killing you. Right. We're supposed to look up to each other. Right. We're supposed to see Christ in each other. Right. Right. We're supposed to want businesses with each other. Right. We're supposed to want neighborhoods with each other. Right. We don't give a damn about their neighborhoods. Right. We don't want to be in a neighborhood with them. Right. We're fine with segregation. Right. But guess what? When we try to rise up and go by our own, like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Black Wall Street, your enemies send bombs all over your nation. Right. Right. Your enemies drop bombs on you because they don't want you to gather together. Right. Read. And committing adultery. We commit adultery. We commit, what is it, don't you? Right, you have sex with somebody outside of marriage, right? Is that a problem? It is a problem. And then our people don't really consider how deep of a problem that is, right? Because guess what? What if the sister has a child? Bring it out. What are you going to do? You're supposed to, right? Is that common among our community? No, it's not. 
And that's another way our people are killing each other. Abortions. Abortions is the biggest murdering way of our people killing our own people. Preach. We have murdered over 20 million people since the 1970s. Bring it out. Through abortion alone. And why is that? Because a lot of our men don't stand up and take care of their household. Right. Right. A lot of our men take advantage of our sisters. Right. A lot of our sisters don't respect themselves. A lot of our sisters dress like whores, yeah. throwing their curves off. But the Bible shows you a better way. Anybody, uh, sisters will say there's no good men. There's no good men. What about getting yourself right? What about the brothers? What about the men getting themselves right? Right. To find a righteous woman. Read. They break out and blood touches blood. They break out and blood touches blood. We kill our own people. Right. At an alarming rate. Faster than any other nation kills us. Right. We kill, we kill more people than the military kills people in war. Real. Of our own people. Right. Through abortions. Through black on black crime. Right. Through right. drive bys Through shooting each other. Right. That's a shame. That's a curse according to the scriptures. Right. That's the problem with our people. But our people don't know that this Bible is the greatest thing that was given to them. Right. Real. And how do they come out of that? What are they supposed to do? How do they escape that lifestyle, I'm asking you. How, how do you get out of the lifestyle of gang violence? How do you get out of the lifestyle of being a, a, a homosexual? You gotta be honest about it. You gotta confess it, right? And change, right? So let's see what the scripture says. Read that. Read that for me. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Problem is, we've been looking up to other nations. We've been looking up to society for answers. Right, but right. the Bible says we ought to obey God rather than men. Right, right. Because a man will set up a law that goes against this Bible. Right. They don't go uh, according to the scriptures, according to what the Bible says. See, That's the problem with our people. Right. Give me Jeremiah 3 15. Real! Because you said. The problem is the word has been twisted, right? right? Right, and we recognize that, we acknowledge that, right? Right. But the Bible says there's gonna be people to twist the word right back around the right way. Right. To tell you the truth according to the Bible, not the way that it was twisted to us, saying that this man is God, this man is Christ, because that's what the world teaches. But it's our job to show you in the scriptures that's not what the Bible says. Right. right. We're gonna put things back in its rightful order. Yeah. The prophets of God has been sent forth to the earth to put things in order. Right, because right. it is out of course. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Yeah. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. So God said he's going to give our people pastors according to his heart, which is this Bible. That's why anytime we're talking to our people, we have to go to the scriptures. Because it's not according to our own mind, it's according to what the Bible says. Right. Can you read it? So it's our job to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Guess what? There's one thing that's heavy on our people that they don't understand. Who is this? Who do they say that is? You was, you was taught that that was Christ, right? Right. You was taught this raised up. And a lot of our people still have that image in their homes. They still have that image in the churches. Our churches. This image in our churches. You think there's a problem with that? Is there a problem with that? You can feel it, because when you look at the image, you're like, something is off about him. Right. Let's see what the scriptures say. Give me that. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. So this, this is going along with the prophets turning those things, those lies, back around and showing you the truth according to the scriptures. Right. Read that. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation is revealed. So the Bible is revealing what Christ looks like. Right, right. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. So God gave it to the prophets to show unto us. We are the servants. This has to be shown to us because guess what? One day, like yourself, we will be raised to thinking that this is Christ. Right. That this is God. So this had to be shown to us. So we snap out of our senses and say, no. The Bible says this is not Christ. That's not God. That's not what he looks like. Read. Things which must shortly come to pass.
things which must shortly come to pass. So we show you prophecies according to the scriptures. They have an old saying, right? If you want to hide something from a black person, where do you put it? Real up! Hey! If you want to hide something from a Negro, where do you put it? You put it in a book. You put it in a book. That's a saying that they say. Because our people hate to read. Our people don't like to read. In slavery, we, we was told we couldn't read. And if they caught us reading the Bible, we would be killed. Read that verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. So the Bible says, blessed is he that readeth. Let's see what the blessing is if you read the scriptures. Go to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. So this is going into the description of Christ. It says his head and his hairs were white like wool. Right. So he has woolly hair. Who has woolly hair on the earth today? Bring it up. And all this ocean. You do? That you do Are you sure? No. Let me see it. That's wool according to the scriptures. Right. So that means that you have woolly hair just like Christ. That means you are a God according to the Bible. Right. Because you fit the identity of the Bible. Right. You are the same bloodline of Christ. Right. Hair like wool. Right. And take it out of again because you're supposed to have it off because of the scriptures. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. Let that wool show. That's right. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head and his hairs were white like wool. You have woolly hair on the earth. The brother in front of the karate sign, he has woolly hair on the earth. That's, that's beautiful according to the Bible. Bible. That's, that's the, the best, best hair on the earth. earth. That's right. They, they call it that. They want to cut it off. They want to straighten it. That's the hair that Christ had. Woolly hair. Keep reading. As white as snow. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Christ's eyes was as a flame of fire. Right. And what do you think that means? His eyes, the whites of his eyes were as a flame of fire. Say it again. You can't look at that. Well, it's going into more than that. His eyes was red for a purpose. Read. Give me that. Genesis. Genesis 49 and 12. Bring it out. His eyes shall be red. Wine. So this is a prophecy of Christ in Genesis, saying that Christ's eyes shall be red with wine, because his first miracle was what? What was Christ's first miracle? He turned water to what? He turned water into wine. He turned water into wine, right? right. He didn't pour the wine out, so, he drank it. Right. He drank wine in moderation. Right. And guess what? A lot of our people start drinking, the whites of their eyes turn red. Let's go back to Revelation. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 15. Real! And his feet! Like unto Read verse 14 again. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Is this white and woolly hair? No. That's not white and woolly hair, right? No, that's straight hair. That's straight hair. Was that hard to understand? No, that, that's easy. But what did you have to do? You had to read it, right? Yeah. That's why the Bible says, blessed is he that read it. Because being blessed shows that you're free from this mental captivity. Right. That you'll take anything somebody say without opening up the Bible. Right. The Bible says white and woolly. That's not white and woolly. That's stringy. Is his eyes red with wine? No. no. The whites of his eyes are white. It's not according to scriptures. Right. That fits a better depiction of what Christ looks like. Right. Right. That's a better depiction. Now, we're going to go into the skin tone. Real. Read verse 15. Verse 15. And his feet. And his feet. So guess what, brother? If you look at your top of your foot, right? The top of your foot is the same color as the rest of your body, right? Real. Read that again. So it's talking about Christ's feet, read, like unto fine brass. So Christ's feet was like fine brass. What color is brass? Say it again. But brass is more brown. It's more brown, right? But let's see how brown Christ was. So it said his feet was like fine brass, right? Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So if you take that same brass, and you throw it in a fire, what color does it come out? It comes out black. What? You said that. Was that hard to understand? No, that wasn't hard to understand. So Jesus Christ was a black man according to the Bible. It's simple as that. And you look like Jesus Christ with the hair like wool. White and woolly. Your skin like grass as if it burned in a furnace. You are made in the image of God. You are a black man, and Christ is a black man. So, according to the scriptures, you have a direct bloodline of Jesus Christ. That's right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision 
The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.